Welcome to Stories and Sips. We are still in the distiller's cottage. Omar and I are working our way through some of uh, Middleton and Irish distillers' products, amazing products. We have something really special today that uh, comes from the original Bow Street Distillery in Dublin. We have a red breast 10 year old from the 1960s that Omar has kindly brought for us to taste. Uh, this is a really incredible part of history. Tell us a little bit about the history of this particular bottle. So red breast itself and um, the brand, I suppose, was a bonded brand. So Gilby's bought stock from Bow Street. Uh, they bottle it themselves and they label it and they call it red breast. So this one here we have in front of us is a red breast 10 year old. It was their signature uh, red breast up until 1965. And in 1965, Bow Street stopped supplying them. So it went into decline. Now the stock did last for the guts of 20 years. So you will see red breast bottles from later on. But uh, the brand kind of took a slump after that because they couldn't get stock. Um, it went into decline. It was very hard to find, very hard to get. And then all of a sudden, with the introduction of IDL, they brought it back onto a main stage. They've pushed it massively uh, in the last number of years. And just like John's Lane, we tried a while ago, this has a cult following. This is the Absolutely pinnacle, does. Uh, an iconic single pot still. Um, the new ones are, are selling all over the world and it's one of their five um, key brands that uh, Perno Ricard are marketing at the moment. They're putting it on a, a center stage globally um, and it's just taken off. It's taken off in the, the US as it you has, know, yeah. massively so. I'm wearing um, my red breast pin in, in paying homage to, uh, to the brand here. Um, what, what I love about this is the history of it, the story of it that back in the, I think the first mention of red breast in the history books of the 1920s and that you had this wine merchant, this wine importer buying, sending empty barrels empty sherry barrels over to the Bow Street Distillery, having them filled up, brought back over in the horse and cart, yeah. stored in their cellars underneath their offices in Dublin. Yes. Uh, and at one time, having as much stock under their cellars as Jameson did in the distillery, Correct. all aging there. And uh, it was known as the priest's tipple back in the day because it was only the priests had the money to buy the good Absolutely. stuff. So this was on the top shelf, so this was highly sought after. So it's, it's really a, a whiskey drinker's drink, isn't it? Yes. And yeah. it's highly sought after these days. Um, the, this Red Breast 10... Uh, in the bigger bottles and these small bottles, they, they command a big price. They do. You know, and, and they are a, a whiskey drinker's drink. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal whiskey. And um, the last time I tried it was about three or four years ago. And again, I only had a small measure of it. So I'm really looking forward to opening this So bottle. you brought these bottles, but you've got one there with a the label and we've got one here without the label. So right. I'm not going to open these. These are your bottles. So <laughs> if you want to open them and you're willing for us to try them, why well, not? I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll leave the one with the label we'll out of course, yeah. And why don't we crack open this Let's do it. The label. Perfect. So, Same liquid. It would have been embarrassing if I couldn't open it. Or if it broke. It's a moment oh, in history yes. now. That seal has been closed for 40 odd years. Absolutely. Amazing. So straight away you can get that old oh, yeah. musty pot okay. still. The old heavier, the old heavier tread pot. But the sweetness to it, even mm, the nose absolutely. is incredible. There's loads of life left in this, even after the bottle is. for so long. And it's great that it's a screw cap. Um, it didn't matter which way it was stored. If it was a cork and it was stored inside, yeah. it would have been uh, deteriorating yeah. over time. But this has really kept its life. No trouble opening it either. No. Only grassy notes. To think that the last time that saw air was mid 1960s or a little yes. bit earlier. Let's launch it. Boy, it's very different to any red breast we have today, very isn't it? Very different. And that's the thing about it, Barry. A lot of people would, would write off a whiskey like this thinking yeah. that. I'm sorry, I know I'm getting the, the finish on it. Yeah, phenomenal. I know. Um, Some length. But a lot of people would write this off because it's nothing like what we have today. It mm. is original recipe stuff. Um, slight, very slight little sulfur note on it, which wouldn't be too uncommon back then because they'd use sulfur candles for mm. uh, for the casks. But very, very slight. It hasn't. It hasn't. Um, Diminished the whiskey. Still quite alcohol forward, isn't it? There's mm. like there's an ethanol oh, yeah. note to that that's quite strong. Mm. 
And this kind of pot still whiskey died out in the 60s before they started turning more to blends for a more global audience. This would have been an old whiskey drinker's drink, but it wouldn't be for a, um, it wouldn't be for everybody. No, it wouldn't, no. Um, a blend generally is made for everyone, easy yeah. on the palate. Yeah. You're getting a good punch on this. I could drink this all day. I love that mm. old, musty, earthy, pot still whiskey. Correct. And earthy, actually earthy is, is the ideal note, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what you're getting from it. It's good, you could nose it, and you could taste it all day. And these are harder and harder to find, these bottles. Mm -hmm. they, they turn up at auction, they turn up Absolutely. in secondary sales sites, but rare enough to find these now. Very rare. Very few bars stocking. And I find an old rural pub in Ireland might still have one on their shelf. Correct. Um, funny story behind these, well not a funny story, but a story behind these two is um, a friend in the whiskey industry did a, a very minor swap for the one with the label and kindly gifted the one without the label to mm. me. So we have a fantastic whiskey community in Ireland. Absolutely we do. Um, and when you're into whiskey and you're drinking whiskey for what it is and the appreciation of what it is, it's amazing what people will do for you. Absolutely. And vice versa, the same person uh, I was able to look after with a, a swap many moons ago. And I suppose this is a little bit of a repayment That's for, nice. for part of that. But um, you, you see that the whole time. We have a great we little community. Absolutely we've, we do. We have the, the Friday night dramas, you know, the Saturday night sips, Sunday nights up. Um, and you get great characters on it and great people uh, commenting on Twitter. But to be able to be gifted something like this and being able to open it and try it with yourself. It's amazing. It's just it's such fantastic. a privilege, yeah. This is what whiskey was meant for. Drinking together. Drinking sharing together. Sharing stories. With friends. That's it. Stories and sips. Having the crack. Slotcha. Slotcha.